Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Watch a Crappens, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today is the one and only Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Well, hello. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Very excited to do some Vanderpump Rules recapping today on a pretty explosive episode. But before we get into that, uh, a reminder, we are doing Netflix as a joke in the beginning of May. It's coming up in a month, April, uh, May 3rd. It's going to be a nice, uh, really, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be a nice intimate show at the Kookaburra Lounge. One night only. So go check us out there. And then... Um, Later in May, we're going to Europe, doing shows in London, Dublin, and Birmingham. So get tickets to all four shows at watchofcrappens.com. You can also sign up for uh, our Patreon there. Uh, this week, we are doing a really fun bonus episode. We're going to do a trailer trash for House of the Dragon, because guess what? We recap House of the Dragon, and when it comes back, we are recapping it. So uh, I know a lot of people are excited for that. So of course, uh, go to patreon.com slash watch what crappens or find the link on our website, watch what You can sign up and also crap is on demand. You can watch us. We're going to wave hi to the camera right now, waving hi to people who watch us with the crap is on demand. So that's basically it, all the fun stuff. And um, now let's get into some Vanderpump Rules. Ronnie, what did you think about this episode? Good episode. Fun episode. Um, it yeah. is distressing. It's a distressing episode because Vanderpump Rules always starts the most bizarre fights amongst commenters. <laughs> and I don't mean just on our show. I just mean in the Bravo universe in general. This week, the discussion has been whose fault are meat skewers being left on a bedside table. Oh, yeah. I'm really surprised how this has taken off on the internet. I mean, people are like very invested in it and they're very upset with Ariana from leaving the meat skewers on the and table. And then they're also upset with me, by the they're way. They're upset I with saw... you. What do you do? Someone was like, I cannot believe the way that Ben was justifying the meat skewers in the container. <laughs> I was like, this is the most internet y thread you could ever imagine. Um, <laughs> I was not justifying trash. I don't know. I honestly, honestly, I don't even remember what I said last week. Maybe I did justify it. Honestly, if I did, I don't really care. Um, but I will say that if I did justify leaving trash by your bedside, I am here to say that I don't justify it anymore. Because <laughs> no, I don't. Oh, that's I'm, funny. Well, I didn't know it was anything about you personally. I just thought it's, I just think this show's hilarious because. It just starts fights like this. It starts <laughs> comment wars like this with people being so upset about meat skewers that they're like, yeah. fuck Ariana, I'm so sick of her shit, fuck her. It's like, whoa, you're mad at someone for leaving meat. I mean, I just, the whole fight to me is insane. And I think it's just uh, funny, to, not funny, but also disturbing to, <laughs> to kind of watch it play out because people are being triggered by so many things in our own lives. Like if you've been cheated on or yeah. if you cheated on somebody, or I think we're all projecting so many of our own things because some of the anger towards the people, and listen, this is coming from me who's an extremely angry person in general. I project anger all over the place. It's my hobby. So I get it. I'm not even criticizing it. It's just always funny to watch because it happens on every season of Vanderpump Rules. The big things, the, the, the affair, those things, sure, they piss people off and, and really enrage people, but it's the little things that keep people watching this show. And this week, it was meat skewers left on a bedside table. <laughs> meat skewers. And let me tell you something. I guarantee all those people who are, like, really worked up into a tizzy about the meat skewers had nothing to say about the fact that Tom Sandoval left an entire kitchen of crap and junk out when he had his party, like, two weeks ago. So... Uh, listen, and I'm on. I'm on team. Put your freaking meat skewers in the garbage. I'm definitely team. Don't leave your Thai takeout boxes on the nightstand. I mean, that's. I don't understand that. I don't know. Like, I maybe you get drunk or something like that. I don't understand why they were there either. But I'm also not gonna lose sleep over it. And I just think that the people who are mad about the meat skewers should like. Where's the anger towards Tom Sandoval for an entire kitchen of shit that was left out overnight? How about that? I don't know, but here's the territory we're entering into. I hate talking this much about people's relationships. I personally don't believe in relationships like that in general. Like, 
love relationships. <laughs> it's not my lifestyle. I've chosen to avoid that. So when it becomes all talking about relationships, I can't. I don't want to hear about it when you're together. And I certainly don't want to hear about it when you're divorced. It's too much for me. It's just too much. Now, I will say one of the things that I find beautiful about this episode is the relationship between Katie and Tom, who are ultimately meant to be together, I'm convinced yeah, at this point. Tom too. Schwartz and Katie Maloney called it last week when I said these two have always been in a relationship. They're in a relationship currently, and they will be in a relationship the rest of their lives. I feel bad for whoever is married to them in the future because they only love each other. The way that they fuck with each other and they actually make life decisions just to trigger the other yeah. is sweet. And that we saw Katie smile today in a way that we haven't seen Katie smile in literal years. I don't think Katie smiled with this much love at her own fucking wedding. There, I said it. To see Katie genuinely looking glowy and happy and beautiful in her relationship with this fucking loser, now that it's a divorce and not a traditional relationship, she's as happy as can be. And I think that that's what miserable people need. They need to be in a miserable relationship the rest of their lives to be happy. And I'm happy for her. God bless her. Yeah, I was gonna say, Katie had a really good episode. Like she was actually cracking me up. She was saying things that were making me laugh. It was like a really good Katie moment. Just the way she smiled and was so happy was was nice it was a nice it was a nice change and you two are made for each other don't ever get back together please but enjoy being miserable together the rest of your lives it really is a beautiful anti-love story it's the kind of thing i can be here for and i am I right in the front row i definitely got the feeling like oh they are having some chemistry in this episode it was weird they're back but um but that being said she still deserves someone significantly significantly better someone who does not just show up dressed like santa's link. little helper he's dressed like link <laughs> from zelda i don't know what was going on with that shirt but it was he's literally wearing link's shirt and she's dressed in some weird fucking bikini uh bra like a over a long shirt dress <laughs> with an acid wash like it's like their fashion even is so terrible and just not understandable to anybody but each other like they mm. they both they both understand the thirst in the other one trying to be cool and just not making it I, I just i mean i think it's beautiful really yeah yeah it is there's so much beauty in vanderpump rules whether it's <laughs> it really meat skewers is. or strange outfits on sad people there's just there's beauty in all the nooks and crannies of this show summer moon's curls whoever is doing her little pigtails with those curls i mean adorable okay so summer yeah. moon's here uh the song is called my world my world my world and we go to summer moon playing with stuff and brock is like what is that called summer moon and she's just like oh my god it's called play-doh stupid did you not have play-doh in new zealand and he goes weird mud <laughs> I believe that. I believe Brock just brought in balls of mud into the into the room and just from outside and just made little figurines or whatever with the mud. So we hear my world, my world, and we go over to um, Schwartz and Joe trying to juice, and he's like, "Oh God, what do I do? This is scary." She's like, "Go, go, go! Oh God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh, oh, oh. oh my God! Look!" The pulp, it looks like it looks like poop, but it sort of looks like spaghetti. Oh my god, are we going to Olive Garden after this? Oh, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> and uh, that's all we get of Joe. I know, which is a damn shame if you ask me. It's a low Joe her episode. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we see Katie and Lala working out in a park with Jenna. Jenna's back. Jenna's been around all these years, and she we haven't seen much of her. She hasn't had a big scene in a long time, but she's um, she's leading a workout, and she has them their legs in bands, and they're doing clamshells. And I was very traumatized because I took myself to a yoga class, and um, I had to do clamshells, and I came home, and I watched this, and they were doing clamshells, and I was like, too soon, too soon. What's a clamshell? It was like your your you got the band around your calves, not your calves, around your shins. And you have to like raise up, you're on your side and you raise up your both feet together and then you have to like open and close your knees. So it's like, it's like, meh, meh, meh. She knows the Pilates band at all time. I think I'll try each, each. I'm gonna try each one of the yoga cocktails. 
And uh, Jenna's like, so how does it feel, everybody? Katie, does that feel good? And she's like, no. I don't understand these workout people who say they're addicted to endorphins. Like, <laughs> it's like they've never experienced true happiness before. <laughs> this isn't what? it. <laughs> okay, well, guys, by the way, uh, Jenna, Jenna really trying to, she's like, well, now that Joe's on the show, I think this is my chance. I can get into the show. Nice work, ladies. So Lala's like, so are you guys coming to the water tasting tonight? Towards what I'm going to do this weekend? And Jenna's like, oh, water tasting? And Lala's like, yes. I invited everybody, including Tom Sandovalsk. Um, um, music change. Dun, dun, dun. And Tom is finishing on the treadmill, the only place he ever goes anymore. You know, it's become sad. <laughs> I'm officially sad metaphor. now watching Tom on that fucking treadmill every single episode. That's all he does, you know? It's, you're too obsessed. And we just recorded a Below Deck episode where there is another guy who's just too obsessed. It's not that hot when you have to work that hard for it. You know what I mean? There needs to be something kind of natural on you. And that much exercise is not natural. I don't care what anybody says, but calm it down. You're making me nervous, bro. Well, it's also such a metaphor for Tom Sandoval that he puts all that energy and effort into something and still is in the same spot as where he, when he started. Well, it didn't take him anywhere. He's, he's just, just he's just he's doing it, so much to go place. nowhere, really, at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, so Ariana is in the kitchen, and Anne comes over, and you know, because the doorbell's, oh my god, oh my god, it's me, I'm at Ariana's store. I'm at Ariana's store. Are you answering the door? Thank you so much for answering the door. I could have just stayed out here. I could have camped here. Isn't that funny? Do you want me to camp here? If you told me to camp here, I would, just to do research for you, because I'm going to be your assistant. <laughs> Am I putting the ass in assistant right now? I don't need to. I love you. I'll be quiet. You talk. You talk. <laughs> I put on a whole business suit, so I look like really official. Oh, it was really weird because I worked to Taylor Swift. Everyone was like, why is the suit here? And I was like, couldn't help it. I was like, I was my, I'm in my Ariana era. So it's Taylor Swift and Ariana all at the same time. Well, anyway, so I'm hired, right? Ariana's like. So, and Ariana's yeah. like, wow. Maya's like, oh, Anna's here. And she's like, what happened to all the treats, Ann? She goes, oh, my God. I ate them all. Sorry, Maya. I ate your treats. <laughs> Am I fired already? <laughs> yeah, that was odd. Anne ate Miles Streets. <laughs> so then Anne is like, yeah, so uh, anyway, um, so before we get this job interview, which this definitely is a job interview, right? I just have to pop upstairs real quick. Hold on one second. I'm going to go up there uh, to the living metaphor. So she goes up to check on Tom and she's like, hi, so sorry I'm late. I'm just here if I can help uh, Ariana. So, um, you know, I can see if I can help her with some people in the assistant community. <laughs> oh, community of one. Starring Anne, just me. Anyway, have fun on the treadmill. Bye. <laughs> He's like, whatever. He's just going like through a box of memories on the floor, you know? And um, Ariana's saying, yeah, it might be tough if I steal my roommate's assistant, but he doesn't res he didn't respect me enough to not fuck my friend while I was at my grandma's funeral, so I should be stealing his assistant. Khalifale. <laughs> <laughs> So she's like, okay, and so I know that you get here at like 10 or 11 and like whether or not there's stuff to do and you just basically get paid to hang out with like Maya and chill. She's like, yeah, yeah, like it has its cons. Like sometimes I have to pick up Sandoval's dirty socks and underwear. It's not dramatic to me whatsoever. I, it don't, doesn't, the, the scent doesn't haunt me at night. But yeah, that's basically what I do. Yeah. Yeah, and I know for a fact that he sometimes would wear those same socks and underwear for, like, days in a row. And you wonder why I didn't want to fuck him? I mean, change your drawers, bro. Change your drawers. <laughs> You're in danger drawers. <laughs> You're in danger drawers. Let me tell you what could have helped this couple. A maid. A cleaning yeah. person. Okay? You guys are gross. Okay? <laughs> We've got the meat skewer story. We've seen the bed. We've seen the bedrooms, both dirty. You guys, Tom never shaves, showers, does anything, cleans himself. You guys need a damn cleaning person. And yeah. I would suggest that anybody, if you can afford a house that's two stories and 3,000 square feet and has shiplap and a Lego painting of yourselves, you can afford a cleaning person. Get on that, you know? Yeah, I think that's a really good note. <laughs> or like some soap. Anything. So, some um... <laughs> No, a person holding the soap is important, you know? And if you think because you can't smell you that the person next to you can't smell you, that's not true. That's a fallacy. Okay. That's called nose blind. <laughs> um, I'm always 
paranoid that I'm nose blind. I'm always, 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 always paranoid. I'm always like, oh, I smell great today. Look at me. It's smelling wonderful. And then you... last week when I was in New York, I was sitting on the subway and it was like a crowded subway and no one was sitting to the left of me and there were three seats to the right of me open. And I was like, I must reek because this, there are people standing and no one wants, there are all these open seats. You don't, you don't even have to sit next to me. You can sit two away from me and no one wants to take the seat. Well, I know that I'm nose blind because sometimes I'll hang out with my family. And when they do this, I realize how much I've been stinking all this time because they go, oh, my God, you smell so good. I go, well, <laughs> so I guess I've just been smelling like old cottage cheese this whole time and nobody said anything, you know, cottage cheese is very trendy right now. Is it very? Yeah, it's cottage cheese is trendy and so is cabbage. You know why I brought it up? Because I was reading a thread um, on Reddit about people using cottage cheese to make other things. Like, I made salad dressing with blended up cottage cheese. And it's I was like, trendy. this is so sad. <laughs> I but, literally had some cottage cheese last night, but not because it's trendy, because I've always loved cottage cheese. I've been I've a cottage, always loved cheese, cottage cheese too. It was my but sin during Weight Watchers as a kid. I would always, because you could eat what, uh, cottage cheese. It's like one of the only things I could ever eat. And so I would eat, you know, 20 cartons of it. Because but it has to be full fat. It has to be full fat because if you get like reduced fat, it's just sort of like, it's just sad, but full fat is like delicious. Um, okay. So Ariana's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, Tom's disgusting and doesn't do his laundry or whatever. Come so, for the recap, stay for the cottage cheese dog. <laughs> so Anne's saying, yeah, you know, I do do a lot of like picking up underwear and stuff like that. But I wouldn't mind it if it was your underwear. Oh my God, what kind of underwear do you wear? <gasps> That's a crazy question. I can't believe I asked that. I'm so sorry. Please do not put that on my employee evaluation. If you hire me, if you hire me. I don't know if you're gonna hire me. <laughs> Would you hire me? Are you gonna hire me? I don't know. That's that's a. I shouldn't ask that. I shouldn't ask that for someone who works for you. Wait a minute, do I work for you? Do I work for you? <laughs> I mean, I just know you'd be a great boss, but I think the boss that I currently have, he is the worst. I shouldn't be saying that out loud, but don't worry, he's definitely not listening in at this moment. He is definitely not listening in. Oh God, I love you. You'd be such a better boss than Tom. Oh my God. And of so course, she was like, so I know that you, you know, do housekeeping. And she goes, yeah, but I do look forward to the times that I could do more admin. <laughs> that would be amazing. Do you have any paperwork to file? Oh my God, don't say yes right now because I don't want to start shuddering all over. I don't want body shutters. Hold on. Let me prepare myself. Do you have a sweater? Do you have a sweater before you t talk about filing things? <laughs> Um, so Ariana's basically like, yeah, you know, I just want a thing where like if there's an email that comes in, you know, <gasps> just like you just take email. care of it. <laughs> yeah, and like you can just like prioritize and say like, oh, we're not gonna do that. We are gonna do that. You know, just like brand deals, just, like, brand deals. Oh yeah. my god, I would be so good at brand deals. Who do you get emails from? Does Uber still email you? I've really <laughs> always wanted to talk to somebody inside Uber, not as much as you. I want to talk to somebody in Uber, lucky enough to know you. Could you call them? Call them right now. You know, it'd be really fun is if you had a brand deal for Bram. Like imagine a brand 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 deal. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be hilarious to be like almost meta, but it's not totally meta. I can make you poop. I promise. It's me, Ariana. I can make you poop. You could probably make me poop. I'm pooping. Ariana right now. Oh my Maddox. God, why am I talking out loud? But we brand. I'm just putting it out there. Putting it out there. Then featuring Anne, the Anne experience. I could do the maze on the back of the box. I could be the maze. Be like, get, me, get Anne out of the maze. And the maze could look like Tom Sandoval's face. You know what I'm saying? Right? You it should works. brand brand with Anne. Mm. Brand brand Anne. Brand, you can't brand, spell Anne brand without Anne, sort of. <laughs> So she's like, oh my God, I would love to work for like an amazing girl boss. That would be amazing. Now, if it doesn't work out, I totally understand jumping off a cliff. <laughs> Just say RIP and really didn't ever get what she wanted. <laughs> but hopefully in heaven, Ariana will need an assistant. Am I right? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I shouldn't joke about that right now. That's horrible. <laughs> I'm at a job interview. Did I pass this? Am I hired? Are we coping? I ate a meat skewer. I ate a meat skewer. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> oh my God. Please pump my stomach. Pump my stomach right now. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll pay the six thousand dollars. You just pump the stomach. You're so good. Oh, You're so soon. good at pumping a stomach. Too soon. And so Ariana's like, "Well, I would, uh, you know, I don't know." But meanwhile, Tom is listening to this, right? Because he's come out of his, his Sweat walking cave. den, and he is now listening to her beg for a job from Ariana. Why are you guys doing this in the living room of the house? You know that yeah. he's going to be listening. It's fucking Tom Sandoval. Why? I thought and that was I guess very that's strange. kind of the point, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. And and the thing is that like Ariana doesn't even wind up hiring him. So he's listening in. He's like, oh, man. I mean, Ariana already got our friends. Now she's going to take my assistant. She can have anybody she wants work for her. Oh. The irony of him saying that. 
anyone. Because that's exactly. what people say when they get cheated on. You could have had any man in the world. Why would you take mine? You know? Right. Jolene. Like Exactly. But, but it's also like Sandoval, you could have cheated. Not that it makes it better, but you also could have cheated with anyone, but you went for a Raquel. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that's so, what I'm saying. That's why it's so yeah. funny. Because he's the one who had an affair. Now he's using like a fair terminology that victims use. <laughs> victims of affairs. And also <laughs> Ariana, it's it's like this victim speaking of victim thing like she took all the friends you literally still have schwartz and these are adults who chose not to be friends with you because you were irresponsible and you lied to everyone and you proved to be actually just like a shady ass person it wasn't that ariana stole the friends and if it makes you feel any better they don't like her either apparently <laughs> yeah and there's that's that too no one has any out. alliances on this show you know you know who's the only person who stole anything here is Lisa Vanderpump who stole all their souls. And let me tell ago. you who else feels like they don't have friends. Every other cast member on this show. Because they don't. You're all fucking monsters. Okay? You're all so, fucking um, monsters. So Ariana's like, you know, things are kind of weird right now, Anne. Because, you know, I'm living with a monster who you work for. So maybe when I'm out of the house, we can do something. And she goes, oh my god, so we're going to keep in touch? <laughs> oh my god, I just winked at you. <laughs> Did I just wink at you? Am I fired? <laughs> I would have to be hired first. Hire me so you can fire me. Hurry. I just hurry. realized... If we keep in touch, that means we have to start touching so that we can keep the touch. So, um, okay, I'm going to just put my finger on your shoulder, and I'm just going to keep it there, and I'll just follow you around all day with my finger on your shoulder, so that way we're still in touch. Uh, she's like, well, lucky for you, I am the HR department, and I'm totally fine with it. She's like, oh, my God, I love you so much. I love you. <laughs> so then we go to Brock and Schwartz's. And Schwartz, or Brock and Sheena's, and Schwartz comes over, and he's like, oh, wow, this was so fun coming all the way out of here. This was great. I've been in the car 19 hours. Oh, hey, Summer Moon. Hi, I got you a hat. It's an adult sun hat. <laughs> it's an adult gardening. sun hat. That, congrats. You stopped by an Exxon station and bought something. <laughs> so she's like, it's a hat that says, it does not, that says, do not disturb. So I'm like, were, is this just what you were wearing when you were around Katie in your marriage? <laughs> Exactly. So um, she's like, he, Brock's like, you want to try this on? And she's like, I don't want it. It's like smart kid. You know, he's like, all right, go back to but they, putting they mud put on, on your head. They put it on her anyway. And it looks like Looney Tunes. It literally looks like, you know, when they hide under a hat and then they have to move closer or something. So you see the hat and then it goes up and the little feet it goes over a little bit and goes down again. <laughs> oh, don't worry. She'll grow into it. Oh, by the way, today I opened, uh, you know, I opened my Instagram. And it was so crazy because everyone's like holding their stomach and like popping up babies. It's like really crazy Instagram. Literal ovulation all over my Instagram. Uh, not ovulation. <laughs> dilation. Centimeters counting. and I don't even know what I'm talking about. I want a baby. I'm just a sweet guy. Sweet guy who wants a baby. What a fucker. Because you know, it's like, you know, Katie hears this and is like, like fuck you like That's this is what i said it. wanted yeah it's like i wanted this and then you were like no and now all of a sudden you're like oh i want a baby after that's why i was doing up. it what i realized i mean a long time ago but they're really highlighting that i'm correct in this episode is that he's triggering her but he's doing it out of love because he knows that she hate she he knows that she's happy being in a victim space and so he's victimizing her by this and then she's has a reason to yell at him and feel hurt and then he gets to pretend he didn't mean it when they both know that he did and then they just that's how they feel comfortable i don't know how else to explain it it's a cycle of abuse basically is what it is and well, it's just once, so sweet once again he's also sending a message to katie via via a third party which is that he's going to tell this to sheena and brock and then they're going to tell katie like like oh the other day like schwartz came over and he like brought like this like really big hat and then he was like oh my god i want to have babies now i wish i could have babies oh, it's not funny that he said that like that's exactly he's he's just sending the messages to katie through other people to make yep. her mad yeah or to get her back or is it to get her back you know that's the kind of mixed message that he's sending you know is it just Isn't to it infuriate both? katie or is it to get her thinking well maybe he's learned a lesson and now he does want a family and he is gonna he is ready to get serious now why know. is it an or instead of an and ronnie it could be both. He's get trying. He wants to get her mad, and he wants to get back at her, uh, or, or and, back to or and. So or then, and. Um, he's like, "Oh my God, you know, uh, like uh, his father time is knocking, and he's saying you're not getting any younger. <laughs> Your restaurant's a failure. Oh God, well, Father Time really is a terrible Yelp reviewer. Anyway, I want your life, guys. This is amazing. Baby with such a tiny head. God, really? How does she go out in the sun? She can't fit in any hats." 
everything. <laughs> By the way, uh, Schwartz, you know what else is saying? You're not getting any younger. Your future bleach blonde haircut. <laughs> no, you're like, you're about five minutes in the future. Draco Malfoy hair. <laughs> Sir, you're not getting any younger. Stop doing this. <laughs> that is what your hair will be saying to you very shortly. So um, Sheena's like, I'm gonna get the cold plunge. So, you know, <laughs> they, they have, who they have an have on-site a, cold plunge. Who doesn't have a cold plunge on their balcony? <laughs> they go outside where they have a cold plunge. They just there. Is, was Brock try? Do you think Brock was trying to like brand his old his own cold plunges after last season or two seasons ago? Whenever it was when he had James doing a cold plunge, remember he 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 like he like sat James down. He's like, "Hey, do a cold plunge right now, and you need to learn how to do this cold plunge and get sober." <laughs> I feel like Brock was trying to make cold plunges a thing for himself, so they just have this like cold plunge prototype in their on their side. Yard. You know, we uh, I've just been hearing a lot of cold plunge stuff because they just did it on another Bravo show. I don't remember which one. And then every year, at New Year in my neighborhood, I live in a uh, I live by a lake, and so every year they do a cold plunge at New Year, and that's why I won't speak to my neighbors. I just think mm -hmm. they're all monsters. <laughs> Who does I think so. that? I'm like, no, I will not. I will not go hang out with you. What is this like? You're gonna have me drink some Kool Aid and I'm gonna die. I don't trust these people. Cold Kool Aid. Um, I think it was Sandoval who did the cold plunge actually oh, earlier this Sandoval. season. Yeah, with remember Billy he came Lee, up yeah. and his like hair was coming forward. Um, and Billy Lee was like, "I hope you just realize oh. that we're best friends. You just realize we're best friends, right? Right? It was amazing. It was so fun. <laughs> remember that time you came to see me do stand up? <laughs> so, uh, so Sheena does a cold plunge in the middle of this visit. Like, also a strange thing to do when someone's visiting you." And then um, Schwartz is like, oh, God, whenever I come to the west side, it's like a gulp of fresh air. <laughs> I used to say that about sex with Katie. Ah, oh, like we do. We don't do this often, but we should. God, I wish I could have sex with her all the time and make babies with her. Oh, well, please don't tell her that. Well, she's having more sex, just not with you. <laughs> Katie's at the ice cream store on Beverly Boulevard. She's not going to appreciate that you said that while she's trying to eat ice cream. I'm sorry. I'm not following Katie around. <laughs> she's, just, she's just in the cold plunge, just watching everybody on video cameras. So then we go to Katie's apartment in Valley Village, and I realized something because I am detail-oriented like this. Um, based on the exterior... Assuming the exterior shot is accurate, Katie's apartment in Valley Village is the same building that Kristen is in, in the Valley. So Katie and Kristen live in the same building. And they're like really keeping this under wraps. That the two of them are still like witches of WeHoing it up. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, go look at the footage, everyone. Look, you will see it's the same complex. Unless that's Bravo's just dude. throwing in generic exteriors. Maybe. Yeah, but they would have to know that someone would figure that out, right? Eagle-eyed Ben. Actually, you're the first person I've heard point that out. <laughs> Exclusive. Exclusive, you guys. <laughs> Tell that kind of Wait, I'm sorry. We're cutting that part out, and we're putting it on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ariana comes over, and she's like, I had six shots of espresso. I need to continue this espresso buzz. I was like, really? This is you, this is you on an espresso buzz? <laughs> And so I'm, she's like, I am so, I'm so manic right now. I almost threw away my meat skewers, but I think I need to have one more shot of espresso to do that. <laughs> and Katie's like, um, I have a can of. <laughs> <laughs> do you want that? Hold on. Let me put it in my <laughs> rig machine. That's Katie's branding. I think Katie should come out with her own sparkling soda. It should just be called. <laughs> it's the actual sound of the carbonation is the brand <laughs> it's the only thing that complains louder than topo chico so uh ariana talks about her meeting with Anne, and she's like you know i mean i'm just afraid that tom could be vindictive so I was like, maybe not, you know? So then I'm getting ready to leave and she's down there crying because Tom was coming down on her because he was upstairs eavesdropping on us the whole time. I was like, you did that on purpose. And are we sure she wasn't crying because she didn't just eat a meat skewer by accident? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be loved like Maya. I was just taking one for the team, Team Maya. Oh, team Maya. <laughs> Maya was looking like... at these scissors, so I ate them so she couldn't get to them. Ow, owie, tummy, tummy, owie. <laughs> 
<laughs> Katie's like, I don't like this invasion of privacy happening. I feel like my privacy was inundated via Sheena attack <laughs> tracking. Your privacy Max was like inundated. Oh my god! <laughs> is, it, is it an inundation of privacy? Who was who was forming these sentences? <laughs> when she said she had a can of THC in her fridge, I was like, that makes much more sense with the trying to make um, inundated or the trying to. What was her thing last the past two weeks? That can is like, please close that refrigerator door. My privacy has been inundated. Fathomless. That fathomless. explains the trying to make fathomless happen over and over. <laughs> so um, she's like, yeah, my privacy was inundated by Sheena tracking Max. And then we see a clip of Sheena going, um, I wanted to look and see if my friend got home okay. And I was like, okay, well, maybe she dropped Max on at home. Like, Sheena is more <laughs> Muppety than ever. <laughs> She also did her confessional from a cold plunge. <laughs> cold plunge. Um, so Ariana's like, I mean, like, I know she has my location, but I'm like, how many others does she have? <laughs> like, probably everyone she met at BravoCon, by the way. She knows where everyone is. <laughs> yeah, and Katie's like, I mean, my location is literally none of your business. <sighs> and Ariana <laughs> says, yeah, I never had Tom's location. Well, there you go. And she even gets her own branded at now, I, the reason Sheena has everyone's location, don't you think it's because of Apple? How they're like, oh, let's share your location with your friends. And she's like, oh my God, we're going somewhere. Share your location right now. And then she just creepily collects them. I'm just like a people pleaser because I just want to know where everyone is. I just want to make sure everyone is safe at the end of the day. That's all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, by the way, I do like that I just had this big revelation of like, Katie and Kristen live in the same building. And then Katie in this very same scene goes, my location is literally none of your business. <laughs> I've inundated her privacy, everyone. She's I talking apologize. To you, you, the inundator. <laughs> Fathomless inundator. So um, Brock, uh, back with Brock and Sheena and Schwartz, he's like, oh, I'm not out of the doghouse yet. Uh. Schwartz is like, oh, my God, you weren't supposed to say anything about Katie fucking Max? And mm. Sheena's like, no, he wasn't supposed to say anything. That wasn't his place, especially now that the fire's on me. Actually, I wish a fire was on me because I'm in a cold plunge and it's like <laughs> literally cold. Who just sits like in a cold plunge time. like that? Sheena's just sitting there like She's eh. just sitting in the cold plunge. <laughs> I don't think the cold plunge is working. And he's like, well, let's not forget last summer she wanted your world to ban. And then we see a clip of Katie going, you know what, Sheena? You're a shitty person. You're a shitty friend. And it's fine because karma's going to come for you and I'm going to watch your world burn. And I'll smile. <laughs> and I was like, oh, she literally did say she wanted Sheena's world to burn. And she's like doing her makeup while she's doing it. Yeah. Uh Whoa, that's that's fucking hypocritical though, because I mean that was my best friend that she was hooking up with. I just kissed Raquel once, and she was just a fringe friend. She was just a fringe friend, not even a real friend. <laughs> she was like, maybe it was tit for tat. No, it was tit for it was, it was dick for tit. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. I was I can't do a good pun for it, but I love I love Sheena offering. Maybe it was tit for tat. Like, oh, I love that that thought never even occurred to Schwartz. Like, oh, maybe this is a tit for tat situation. Huh? So back to Katie, she's like, I mean, it, I wasn't like it wasn't like I'm gonna get with his friend. I mean, in my mind, it was like sort of coming off as like Sheena and Schwartz. Like, this dude has done bad by me so many times. Fuck it. So yeah. it was. It was. <laughs> I'm gonna it get was exactly friend. what you just said it wasn't like. And by the way, good for you. Loved the yeah, movie. Yeah, I have um, 100 percent in support of this. And Katie's yeah. like, Tom can be upset if he wants, but at the end of the day, you get nothing for Raquel. And it's like, should I feel bad? No. It's not like we had an agreement. Right. So then uh Lala sends them a text and they both get it at the same time. And she's like, guys, I want you to chase your water with booth. B Y O B K. <laughs> Okay. Be wop. Be Ariana's like, oh my God, this water party. And Katie's like, I know. And Ariana's like, I know. And Katie's like, the Jura is like, Do you, have we heard from Chef Penny? Penny, did she finish creating our sandwich? That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's something about. Um, so, uh, so anyway, so she's, Lala has, in, so, Lala is inviting Tom to this thing and Ariana's like, well, it makes sense. He would be at her thing. She's going out of her way to understand him. Katie, would do you mind doing the honors? Sure. 
Thank you. Yeah. Her healing journey, I suppose. Again. <laughs> So she's like, look, if I'm going to stay in this group of friends, I'm going to see him. So I need to get the fuck over it. And also, I don't know what a water tasting is. So I've got to see <laughs> how ridiculous this is. So um, Ariana's like, it's not a tasting. It's a water boarding. Am I right? <laughs> Katie's like, <sighs> girl. I'm so glad you take sketch comedy seriously because look how it's paying off. And then, guess it's our favorite side <laughs> character of the year. The <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this. I'm saying this right now before I forget. Did you notice there was an actual scene where they were talking and you could hear the plane overhead? Like you could hear it on the audio. You're like, <laughs> it's, it's like up. Katie finding out she's going to see Tom Sandoval at a, at a, ta at a water tasting. <laughs> <laughs> the southwest plane flies overhead so james is with ali bali he's like we have to get outdoor furniture ali bali lola's water guy is here martin he's like the water man i've definitely seen this guy on the news talking about water <laughs> <laughs> well happy family so um we have a clip of ariana saying um oh this guy is it this guy who's saying it the most important thing we will discover together is that water has taste yeah yeah, his name is Ari. And oh. so James is watching him out the window spilling bottles all over the place. And um, Ari's like, oh my God, I'm getting too excited out here. <laughs> and Ellie's like, oh my God, he saw me looking at him. He saw me. Oh my God, that, he must be a Pisces. That is such a Pisces thing to do, look in windows. <laughs> so they're cracking up and Lala comes over. And uh, James is telling us, uh, you know, since quitting alcohol, I haven't become quite the sparkling water connoisseur that Lala Bala has become. You know, I'm more of a Red Bull and Coca-Cola kind of a guy. Hmm? <laughs> Sometimes not the cola part. So um, everyone's coming over, Schwartz and Sheena and Brock and Ariana and Dana. We have a Dana appearance in Katie. This is like all our, we had a mention of Max and now we have Dana. It's like all our, our, our old friends. So uh, uh, Brock apologizes to Katie. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'll talk to you later. To make it up for you, I made you this cute little ball of mud, just like in New Zealand. Please take it. So do you think that the show's planning on bringing the one season wonders back? Because that's what they're doing. They're, they're reviving all the canceled people. So do you, do you I think don't think they're Max. like, hey, they've, they've had a break and Max banged Katie. So and, he gets to come oh, back and Dana has a show with Katie now, a podcast with her. So right. do you think? Max, Max was, did make a cameo appearance on The Valley that we somehow missed. So he was on camera. Uh, Dana, I think like there's a chance for Dana potentially because she does have that podcast with Katie. And apparently they all love Dana. So I, I could see a world in which Dana starts to make a bigger appearance, but I don't think that like Max, I think that Bravo is like, we'll bring some, some people who got canceled in 2020 back, but we're not going to bring someone like, like Max is not worth it to us. Yeah. Well, we'll see. <laughs> you never Book know. Bravo. It. Bookmark that I predicted. Max Bravo and Dana care. coming back full time so, next year. Yeah. So then, um, Schwartz is like, uh, he's like, why am I nervous? I'm not in trouble. I didn't do anything wrong. Ah! So, uh, oh, Katie says when, uh, when Brock basically apologizes, Katie's like, well, maybe this is payback from Brock, you know, blabbing about my private life after I talked about his. And then we see her like going down the list, like of all the things that Brock did not do. She's like, did he pay for child support? No. Why not? What about like, because he, they were got, getting into fights. Why? Because he's a shitty person. Why? Because he didn't love his wife and his kids. Why? She just goes down the whole thing. And uh, she, she's like, so we good now? Probably not. It's probably going to be a little more. If it is revenge, I think it's going to be bigger than that. But time surprising, that, surprising that she was down to be like, well, I guess I deserve it. That's not, a, that's not normally a Katie vibe. So Schwartz is like, um, why am I nervous? I'm not in trouble. I'm not the one who did anything wrong this time. And now they gather around the table for the water saying, and Lala's like, guys, thank you for coming. I've been sober for five years, one day at a time. Am I right? It's not just a show my mom used to watch. So water may seem like something you drink and they're all the same, but sparkling water has really been there for me when I want to get buck wild, when I want to feel no stress. When I feel sad, 
It's the point where when I met the Don, I squirted sparkling. <laughs> Basically, sparkling water is nature's squirting. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Vince, but it's not called sparkling. It's called sparkling. Sparkling. There was actually a moment. I think it was right there when she said, thank you guys for coming, where she literally said coming. Like I she went does. back and I listened to it. There was an actual hard K sound at it. the end of her comic. Like, <laughs> yeah, that comes from somewhere. She literally does it on G's. It's so funny. So she's yeah. like, has anyone done this before? And Sandoval's yesterday. And they all look at him and he goes, <laughs> kidding. Still got it. So um, Ari's like, what? You know, water has been around for for years. And like the, 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 this water could be dinosaur piss. And I am the Harry Potter of water. And when I shake this water, it's become milk. Look, it's milk. It's naturally carbonated. Look, it's like naturally going. <sighs> yes, what she said. Yeah, I went on the radio one time and I was talking to the Playboy bunnies and they said, it tastes like calm. <laughs> and then he points right at Lala and goes, no. here we go. I was like, why are you pointing at Lala? No, because he goes, it tastes like bleep. But Lala goes, calm. He goes, yeah, that's. <laughs> Oh, oh. I was like, why is he pointing at La La while he's talking? That's rude. They said it tastes like the thing that's always in this one's mouth. Ha, 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 ha. Slutty girl, slutty, slutty, slutty girl. Uh, the slut shaming water guy. So Schwartz, <laughs> uh, they're all pretending to like give a shit, you know? And he's like, this one is a cuvee water. It's the only one on this planet. This one, this bottle, a oh, thousand dollars. Pop. Look at that, just popping cuvee water like it's nothing. Santa was like, dude, what makes it so expensive? He's like, well, you know, it's like two springs connecting. And Lala's like, wow, sk, how many bottles are there in the world? Sk? And he's like, oh, well, I don't know how many, but I do know that we're drinking the only one in America. He's like, and we're drinking it. Wow. <laughs> we're drinking it. I just squirted all the other water out right now. <laughs> <laughs> and Katie's like, it tastes like water. <laughs> Katie, no, they're all like, wow, and she's she's like, it's water. <laughs> it just tastes like water. This does not compare to wine tasting at all. <laughs> I, I I had to imagine that she was right on this one. I'm sorry. I'm sure so it was now lovely. Ariana's like, can we get wine? Yes, everybody, you just got Ari. Water, come in, water. So they go inside and, um, okay, so the girls go inside and the guys are still outside and Brock's asking about tea. And Sandoval's like, no idea what's going on with her, all right? I'm seeing some people. That's it, guys. I'm just seeing some people. No more questions. No more questions. No more questions, I, guys. I enjoyed Brock in this moment because I don't know if you noticed, like, Brock at rest is him ready for a ball to come his way because he's like asked a question and then he just like stands and puts his hands out to receive a ball. And I just love, I was like, I'm not sure that there is a ball that's going to be thrown. Maybe there is one, but he's just ready for one. He's like, yeah, all right, hold on. Let me just get ready. Boys. Look, let's, let's, go, let's throw a ball at each other. We're boys. That's what They're such do. boys. Yeah. They're like, I want to talk about your relationship, but I also want to catch a ball in the process. <laughs> so inside the pizza's coming and you just hear Sheena go, there better be ranch. James, did you get ranch or was the ranch in the seventh house of Mercury? <laughs> they forgot the ranch, everybody. I'll go get the ranch. So Sandoval runs out the door. He's like, sir, sir, I need the ranch. The ladies need the ranch. <laughs> the real American only... hero over here. And Ariana's like, since when does he chase ranch? He's like, doing so much he's like doing way too much right now <laughs> see this is why you can't fire ann you need to have your ranch delivery person ready at, at the moment you need her well I, so, I would suggest that if he finds the ranch you should leave it on your bedside table so <laughs> maya has something to eat skewers with because <laughs> ranch helps everything go down better seriously so so then we hear the delivery guy say oh there's none there's no ranch and then Ariana's like, why is he doing the most right now for the ranch? So Sandoval comes in. He's like, dude, I'm trying to get the ranch, man. He uh, hears it and he's like, it makes it harder for me to like just stay in the background when I hear Ariana making all these comments about how much I mess up ranch. 
<laughs> I'm working so hard to rebuild relationships, dude, uh, and I'm not being allowed. She's constantly pressuring people to side with her. The deck is constantly standing, stagnating. It. You cheated like a second ago, <laughs> dude. You give it like, a minute. You get being able to like retrieve a heroic small thing of ranch does not exonerate you from terrible behavior over the past year. Yeah. So um, now the guys are outside and Brock is just the messiest guy. I love that Brock is just happily doing Sheena's dirty work in every episode. He's like, so do you want to impress us with your single story, Sandoval? Go ahead. He goes, all right, well, I got one. How about this one? <sighs> Hold on, let me work up some tears because this is a rough one, guys. I was just bullied about ranch, okay? So T. <laughs> told me that the other night Ariana was asking her all these questions like how old she is and stuff and talking shit about me when I'm on a first date. I felt that was really, really tacky, guys. Tom Sandoval, the uh, the doyen of, <laughs> of proper behavior. What is he talking about? I mean, it is really tacky, but it was hilarious, okay? I thought it was great. I thought it was Ariana doing some great cock blocking. I think that Sandoval deserves to be cock blocked left and right. I love it. And he, Sandoval talking about tacky when he's like wearing the same clothes day in, day out, and uh, cheating, by the way, and also cheating. Well, and that's and the day ridiculous. that he was dressed like polyester cowboy to go bowling with T, yeah. wasn't it? Or maybe yeah, by the way, you're on Vanderpump Rules. Everyone day. is tacky. Everyone is shitty to each other. Why are you surprised that someone was shitty to, to, to your date, T? Well, he's trying, you know, I think what he's, I think what his plan is, is to make himself the victim here. And what's shocking is that it's actually working. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's working very, very well. So uh, Brock's like, oh, I get it, you know, um, but all, the, all of us, we're still in the infant stage of how to go through this, you know. Not as much of an infant for Schwartz to come and put a gigantic oversized head on us and blind us, <laughs> terrify <laughs> us, and probably traumatize us. But, you know, still young. Maybe you guys should have a conversation. He goes, um, <laughs> yeah, maybe you guys should just chill out about it. How about that? How about that? I mean, like, how many things do I have to do? Like, first I try to chase down some ranch, and now I'm going to have a conversation? Dude. I'm, hey, I'm just trying to, to help, help you. you. You need to talk to Ariana. It's like, I love how people put that on me, dude. Hold on, I need a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to do some breath work over here. <laughs> I need a minute to write in my journal, bro. <laughs> Okay, so the so girls the are girls... inside, and Lala's asking about Anne, and Ariana's like, I don't know what's going on with her. And um, she's like, I asked if she was okay, and she said she doesn't know if she's okay. And Lala says, um, this is bigger than just being an assistant. There's so many assistant that words. <laughs> she's like the middle mats of you guys. Like, what's the game plans for Anne's? Ariana's like, well, my lawyer can do it. She's like, um, well, your lawyer is not going to tell you, like, when to go upstairs and, like, when to use the tonal or, like, when to take your cold plunge. Ariana's like, well, it's my tonal, so I'll use it when I want. Lala's like, um, we got to figure this out, okay? Katie's like, I'm just going to get some water. So she goes outside, and out there is Schwartz in his... In his Legend of Zelda shirt. <laughs> they and... both look so stupid in this scene. I can't. The fashion in this scene is hilarious. Both of them. <laughs> and the dog is just like jumping up on Katie. She's like, no, stop. Stop. Hippie. Graham. Whatever. Who, I don't know what, what you are. Just stop jumping on me. Ew. Disgusting. <laughs> Chell hippie. Um, guys, when dogs are doing that, I know that that's bad manners for a dog. You just need to say hi, pat it on the head, and go about your day. That's all they want. But it's okay? like tacky, bro. She's it's like trying to walk thing. somewhere. It's like tacky, man. It's tacky. Pat the fucking dog on the head, okay? So Schwartz is like, oh, he's all over you like a dog in heat. Sounds like someone I know. Anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to talk about? She's like, anything you want to talk about? <laughs> And he's like, you're like, oh, you dirty dog. And she's like, so I'm like trying on the short stance and walking in a walking. Uh, the um, pants. pants. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> it's like I'm trying on Schwartz pants and walking a mile in your pants. <laughs> I'm walking a fathomless mile 
in your just, what was the other word what was the word from today damn it inundated my privacy the convenient oh, narrative be your fathomless fathomless fathomless. down inundated road don't put this on me so then they laugh they sort of laugh because they both know they're being fuckers to each other right i literally have not seen her smile like this in years that's when i was like oh my god they're meant to not be together forever this is so cute yeah so, I said, what do you want to talk about he's like ah oh, max because she's like okay well Maybe I was just in like a fuck it mentality because you've been like doing me dirty for like years and years. And she says, you know, he didn't respect me. So why am I even give it a th- get, going to give it a thought? I'm just going to do what I want. And he's like, but Max is literally my best friend. And you fucked Max. And then you roasted me to oblivion for one kiss. And she was barely in the friend group. So it was at a wedding that you were technically not invited to. And I knew that you were watching me from a restaurant while I made out with her in front of the entire cast and crew of like 150 people just to embarrass you and piss you off. Because I, I didn't really like you. So what big deal? This guy's such a little shit. So Katie's like, because I asked you to do one thing and you couldn't even respect even respect one simple wish to stay friends. He's, no, I know, I know, I know. He's just like, that was just such a flimsy argument, you know? And I, I respect your feelings too. I do, I do, I do. I try, I respect you. She's like, okay, well, this is why we got divorced. Because everything I felt was just like, a, was so flimsy to you. No, don't do that. No, I'm a little boy. I'm sweet. No. So he's like, uh, you know, we had an, an an agreement and I felt betrayed, but Katie's had this air of moral superiority and she, she fucked up a little bit and, uh, no. it's hot. It's really, really hot. God, it felt so good to say the Katie. F- well, yes. I mean, if Katie's coming from this place of like, oh my God, it's the most hurtful thing you could do to, to even pretend to even hook up with anybody in the friend group when she knows he never hooked up with Rachel. And she made that the biggest deal in the world. So she goes and fucks his best friend. Now, he did it first. So he did it first. But for her to act like, oh, this is no big deal. And I totally didn't do it to hurt his feelings. She knew it was going to hurt his feelings. And that's why she did it. And more fucking power to her. But him being like, oh, wow, she went against one of her own moral things. That's so fucking hot. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I fully support Katie doing this because he did he did render that agreement null and void and she has a right to say you know what why am i making why am i trying to be friends with this person or why am i trying to expect anything or have these like arrangements with him when he doesn't he never ever cared or respected any of my wishes so fuck it i'm horny max has a penis not so much a face but a penis so let's do this and have some fun (laughs) cut to lost footage of Sheena taking or of Katie taking Max's phone and sharing his location with Sheena so she could <laughs> the most romantic the biggest rom-com that. of the year so she's like yeah if Max is the one fuck up that I have then you're so lucky Schwartz is like well Katie has a fuck up too oh feels good to finally say that oh and she's like I've been really fucking affable and accepting of you and letting things go that's for over the years. Except for that <laughs> there's, time there's when Katie. I sat that's in That's what everybody calls Katie, affable and accepting. God, if I've heard yeah. it once, I've heard it nine million times. All right. Yeah, I've really let things like roll off my back like the time you wouldn't you you took the seat in, in first class and I was stuck in coach or <laughs> I think at my walls of text late at night really show how chill I am. <laughs> like a like water off a duck's fallible uh fathomless back <laughs> what is wrong with me okay um, really getting an so he's like okay privacy. can we start fresh can we start fresh now and stop delving into each other's past she's like i'm not delving into the past tom okay but can we be friends like go to dinner she's like no <laughs> she starts kind of giggling she's like no i don't want to go to dinner i don't want to and so you can make better choices like at least with clothing and stuff like that <laughs> look at you <laughs> he goes this is a good shirt and she goes is it Wool? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but what like, are you even wearing? She goes, I look cool. This is like negligee painted onto a, a t shirt. <laughs> he goes, oh, This isn't serving. Just kidding. Just kidding. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then they smile and, at each other in this way. It's like it's on like Donkey Kong. That's all I'm saying. They're back. Yeah. So now Brock is inside um, with the girls, and Ariana is still talking about Anne. And she's like, so Anne said that she wanted to work for me. Well, I mean, guess what? The attempted dog murderer was listening. 
<laughs> and Sandoval, and Sandoval hears it. <laughs> just when he thought, just when he th th thought it was getting bullied for ranch was bad. Now he's actually been elevated to attempted dog murderer. <laughs> dog so, murderer. The point is this. The point is this, Sandoval. You should like just be so happy that you're only getting raked over the coals for ranch and not dog murder because that's that's the rougher one. No pun intended. Rough. So well, he he's is. Like, oh. He was being dragged over the coals for dog murder. I know, but I'm saying that he was like, oh, man, I'm getting dragged over the coals for a ranch. It's like, just you wait. Dog murdering is coming up next. <laughs> yeah, you should have been grateful back in those ranch <laughs> grateful, days. Grateful that it was as simple as ranch. So he hears and he like he does like his rage stare where he's like pouting and like doing his victim like I could cry or rage at any moment, bro. And so Brock's like the attempted dog murderer. And he goes, yeah, she's referring to me, bro. I'm going to bump into the kitchen without ranch that I ran for. And uh, he goes, she left food out. She goes, you went into my room with the door closed. Do not ever fucking do that again. Okay, so apparently on Anne's podcast, she has an, a, a podcast about assistance or something. Oh, geez. So apparently on her podcast, she said that the air conditioner guy came over to fix the AC. And so they put, Tom put, they left the door open for the because the air conditioner guy had to get into her room or something. So they left the door open and the dog snuck in there. So when they closed the door again, the dog got stuck in the room. I have a couple questions. Why is it so bad to put the dog in your room? My, when I leave, I put my dog in the laundry room because I feel like he feels kind of safe. It's kind of like crating your dog. Like it's not bad for them to be locked in a room. I don't understand this whole like. You locked my dog. My dog couldn't get out of the room. I mean, it was in your room. I don't understand. Well, um, it sounds so like it, but it wasn't done with intentionality. I think maybe that's the difference. It's one thing if you're like, okay, Bueller, I'm going to go. Like, here's where, you know, you go into your safe space. But I think it's like the thoughtless thing of like, oh, the dog was just like locked away somewhere and like not being thought of. L. L. Sandoval goes and does something. So I'm imagining that was the trigger point. Hmm. I don't know. If I have a roommate and they oh, have a dog. Not. Or if if I if my That's dog I is staying somewhere <laughs> and someone comes over, they put the dog in my room. I wouldn't think it's really that big of a deal. I mean, I don't, I don't know. To me, it's. Not I am. I imagine what it is. It, I mean, obviously, it's so much more than the dog, right? Like this is this is the dog is just an avatar for so many frustrations. But I imagine where the where the real anger is is like you didn't like you just left the dog in there. The the room was not. Me, this was not a safe room for the dog at the moment. I knew I had garbage in there, <laughs> active garbage, and you weren't even thinking, and you didn't even think, like, where is the dog? Maybe the dog shouldn't be in that room. Maybe the dog needs to be walked, whatever. You never take care of this goddamn dog in the first place. Why are you doing this? I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I imagine that's probably well, what it's not about the, the dog. I mean, I think you're I think you're exactly right. It's not about the dog being in her room and it's not about the meat skewers and it's not about that. It's just like here's another disaster with Sandoval at the head at the helm. Not not thinking about anyone but himself. I think that's what it is, right? Okay. So um so she's like, You went no so she says that and then she tells us he he not only left Maya in my room, he locked her in there for well, dogs don't have opposable thumbs. It's not I like the know. dog. <laughs> it's not dog like the dog like, knew it was uh. locked. A closed door is a closed door. You know what I mean? <laughs> so while she was trapped in there, she ate takeout containers with chicken satay. Un unaware of whether or not she was about to lose her life trapped in the mound of clothes in that bedroom. She ate whatever she found. The chicken satay skewers from a nightstand. Next year, Brie Larson stars in the future film, Maya. Brie Larson plays Brie a Larson. dog trapped in a room. Satay. <laughs> Nothing to eat but dangerous satay. <laughs> so, and then that carelessness, given what she has now ingested, could have ended her life. So Sandoval's like, dude, you haven't emptied the litter box for your cat in two years. <laughs> it's like, this get... is a, we're having the litter box fight right now. <laughs> it's happening, but guess what? Producers are on Ariana's side because they're like, wait one second, we have footage. And there it is, footage of Ariana clearing out the, <laughs> the litter box. Like the, These poor producers, what, what emotional trauma they went through this season where they're like, guys, we need to get footage of Ariana cleaning out that kitty litter box because nothing is happening this season. Please. <laughs> You know that they were like, uh, I don't know if you need to do the, need to get that footage. It's like, no, trust me, 
this kitty litter footage, there will be a time, there will be a place. You don't know when it's going to happen, but it will be called upon. And they're like, it's happening. Get the kitty litter footage. She's like, I literally emptied the litter box when you were out of town a week ago. You want to come about, come at me about a litter box when you almost killed my dog? Do not go in my room. Only, like, only safe space I have in at home because you wrecked it. <laughs> I just love like Ariana, like because obviously she has like not talked to Sandoval in all this time. And she has lots of rage still pent up because don't forget, this was probably only like two months after that reunion. Or three, actually, no, the, the arena was in March. So it's like still like fresh. She hasn't talked. So now it's all just no, no. floating Scandal out. No, no, Scandal was in March. The reunion was. But the reunion was, was the filmed reunion in, March. in March. No. Yeah. They, no. Didn't they film Scandal it in March? Scandal happened in March. So then they picked up cameras. And remember, the season aired for a long time before the reunion. That the reunion we were, aired in We June. all knew what was happening while the season was going on, right? We all knew about Scandal while the that... season was still airing. I thought the reunion filmed famously like late March, and that's why it was so incredibly like no, early that's what April. Scandal did, but it if it filmed in the you know at the in the spring, just not that early. I don't think it was right after, but it was. I don't know. You know what? I'm speaking like I know, but maybe I'm it was wrong filmed on that. March 23rd. No way! It was filmed that soon. Just yeah, three weeks after. They got that the, is that's crazy. why they were. That's why they were all going nuts. So, I mean, anyway, I'm not trying to... You see how I argue? Like, what the fuck do I know? And I'm just arguing to the death over it. Listen, um, yeah, and I'm I'm not nice. trying to be an Ariana apologist, you know, like, even though people think, people think I'm on team meat skewer. Um, but I am trying to say, that, like, she's clearly... The rage is now just pouring out. And um, I actually thought it was really funny. <laughs> Because she just shuts up Sandoval. Like, it's like not a nice way to conduct yourself, but um, I just thought it was funny. She was like, shut the fuck up. And every time the rest of this episode, he tries to do anything. She just yells at him and it, and he just like slinks away. And I was cracking up. I don't know. But maybe that makes me soulless, but I thought it was hilarious. It's so funny how everybody's acting like she's completely gone off the rails. And I mean, everybody on the cast when they were all like this at the reunion they were all like this they were all doing this like literally a month ago you know or whatever whatever it was and they're acting like oh my god i can't believe she's acting crazy she's the person who's actually involved in it none of them it didn't affect yeah. the rest of them and they were still like how dare you fuck you piece of shit especially lala and james who are now like oh my god you know and lala I feel like especially people... like oh my god get over it already yeah and also i think that the people watching it too are like like, oh my God, like she needs to like relax. She needs to calm down. That's like so mean to him. He's like trying to grow because people now are like, this happened so long ago. But the truth is this was filmed only, this is still the kind of the thick of it. This was like three or four months after, it's it had to be two months after that reunion aired. This had to be around August, right? So like that's still like in the thick of Scandaball. So emotions are still super high in this group. So I think that like for us well, as viewers, it point. feels like excessive, but it's... Oh, I feel really like the point of the it. audience is, you know, you're on a show with Tom. So obviously you think you're going to get everybody else to stop filming with Tom. And that's like your revenge because at the reunion, they were like, fuck Tom. We're all completely team Ariana, mostly because they didn't want to get canceled. And if you were, <laughs> and if you said anything against Ariana at that time, you were screwed, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think they were automatically on her side. But they're also on the side of doing a show, and you have to show up and do your show. And so I think she's like, these people are supposed to all be canceling him, but obviously nothing happened this season. And the producers came to her and were like, listen, you guys have to shoot together. We're not paying you the most out of everybody on this show, which I don't know if they are or not, I'm assuming. But we're not putting another season into this show where everybody's coming back to see the fallout of Scandaval, and you guys don't shoot. That's insane. You have to fucking show up to parties, and you have to shoot. So now they're coming, and she's losing it, because she's like, why the fuck should I have to shoot with him? Well, yeah. because you're on a TV show. And that's it. But yeah. No one said she has to be some polite little, some polite little innocent girl like who's not going to say anything. She still has the right nice. to say, fuck you. And that's what we're getting. You know? Yeah, because she like fucking hates this guy. She yeah. like hates this guy. And I think she's 100% entitled to her hate. And, you know, then <laughs> so she just like 
<laughs> bites his head off. And I just think it's great. So she's like, oh my God, she's taking a pretty big jump from accident to dog murder. Maya's okay. There's no dead dog in this situation. Hello, I just tried to save the day with ranch. This is ridiculous, man. So, um... I don't think any of this is hilarious, honestly. I hate it. I hate watching people scream. I hate couples watching. I, like I said at the opening of the recap, I don't like when you're together and I don't like when you're apart. I don't like couple fighting. And that's all this is. And to me, it's just like listening to unimportant fights about stupid things I don't care well, about. Like, If I were here. sitting there, I would have hated it because I also don't like when couples fight. But from watching on TV and watching Sandoval do a whole season of like, woe is me and like doing fake therapy and, you know, making himself to be the victim and like, oh, what was I supposed to do, man? All this stuff and to finally have someone just like yell at him i was okay with it yeah but the thing that's bugging me about it is i know she's playing right into his hands in a way because he's purposely like then he comes out and he's like well why don't you respond to an email because she's going off she's still in the middle of going off she's like and second of all and second of all and he's like why don't you respond to an email then she goes second that's all i said um because he's playing right into her hands because now she looks like she's, no, she's playing into his hands like yeah. she's being a total asshole and now he's yeah. the big victim and i see how it's playing out online and i see that he's winning i see that his stupid immature game plan is totally working and it's it's making me well crazy. it's frustrating it's frustrating just because you see like like in the court of public opinion, the things that she should be doing to still remain like the queen. But um, it's frustrating to see that, like, it's like you said, she is sort of playing into a narrative where she's the unhinged one and he's just like the sweet one who's just like flawed. And, uh, but I also hate that people, it's so obvious that that's like, like it's so, I hate that people just can see that that narrative is there, but still then also buy into it. And that bothers me. But yeah. in terms of just like pure entertainment of having someone on my TV screaming at Tom Sandoval, I loved it. So outside, Hippie hears all this and is crying, you know, not enough to not jump victim. all over somebody if they come out there because, you know, his ass will. And then Katie is like, <laughs> like, 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 like finding out like you've like made out with like Sheena. That's like, it's like, oh, God, she's going to try and make this happen. But it's interrupted because they hear the screaming and yelling. And so that's kind of put to a stop. So then back inside, Ariana is still yelling, do not respond to me. My email, my lawyer will be responding to your email. Do not speak to me. Do not speak to me. Well, he's unprofessional. It's been like over like two months, man. And, and Ariana's like, like, he is so professional and he is gonna write you a very well thought out response. Now, do not speak to me. So he's like, yeah, for like two months, it better be professional. He's like, why are you talking to me? You left the fucking back door open the other night. One more example of your carelessness and your callousness about what was my dream house for my children. So get the fuck away from me. Don't ever look me in the eye again, you piece of shit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. So they go inside. Now Schwartz and Katie come inside. And uh, Ariana's, you know, talking about how this cost her $6,000 and she had to have it extrapolated from Maya's stomach. And Lala's like, well, should he have gone into her room? No. But the dog eating all his disgusting meat on skewers on the side of her bed, that's Ariana's fault. I mean, throw your trash away. Like, didn't you do a trash bag commercial? <laughs> <laughs> You may not have to agree with it. You don't have to agree with everything Lala says, but that shit was funny. Didn't you yeah. do a glad bag commercial, bitch? Get glad. Okay. Yeah, that's, I think it's a really, it's a really strong point. Like, don't leave your takeout. Don't leave your takeout out. So, um, so then Schwartz calls up uh, Sandoval and he's like, dude, that was, that was heated. He's like, yeah, she called me a dog murderer. I mean, like, the air conditioner's messed up. I had to go into the room. Like, me or Anne closed the door and she ate stuff. Like, whatever. It's like, like yeah, that's what dogs do. Like the time that dog ate 500 laxatives. Who has 500 laxatives? Where did all those laxatives come? That's a crazy amount of laxative. That is somebody who's planning on pooping diarrhea for many times a day for a long time. Okay, it's yeah. a person who plans to poop for a very, very long, long time. Explosively is what I meant to say. 587 <laughs> laxatives. 500 laxatives coming out of my butt. So Seasons Schwartz of poop. 
Schwartz is like, well, this was supposed to be a low-key trial run to see if you guys can coexist. And he's like, yeah, but see that rage? That's what I dealt with our entire relationship. That terrifying rage. Hold on, bro. I've been traumatized. <laughs> it's like so unfair. Like every time I just leave a door wide open to our house and we're not there, or every time I leave out 500 laxative pills, or like every time I like cheat, she just is so rageful. It's like so fucked up, man. Can't even cheat on a girl anymore. God. Ah. So, so now Ariana is yelling inside. She's so pissed, you know, and she's finally just yelling at the whole cast and production, basically. She's like, <laughs> fuck you guys, you know? Like, I'm not supposed to yell at him, but you keep putting me in these fucking situations, basically. So she's like, this is why I don't talk to him. He, he put my in my room after I shut the door and I have something on my nightstand, and then he shut the door and makes sure he's not in there, which I do every single time. What the hell? <laughs> That takeout was meant for mosquitoes and flies only. <laughs> what were the ants supposed to eat? <laughs> Poor starving cockroaches. You Have you ever seen a line of ants walk up to their food source and it's just gone? <laughs> the devastation. What are we to be what are we supposed to be impressed that they're carrying in a long line? <laughs> <laughs> they were a society that you just ruined. So Lala's like, well, you're going to have to have a productive conversation with him. It's sort of like me with rants. You know, one thing that I went through in my trauma in, you know, I do have a storyline about cheating as well. If anyone wants to talk about it, I can elaborate some more. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> She's like, I'm not having a productive conversation with a sociopath, a disgusting narcissist, gaslighter, piece of shit fucking person. <laughs> yeah, but then you're going to go home tonight and then it's just going to be the two of you. Like, what are you going to do then? She's like, I'm going to set fire to his ass. Okay, you know what? There's too much hanging out <laughs> okay. with Katie. You guys can't okay. just be lighting everybody on fire. I know. So she was like, um, seeing Ariana like this is heartbreaking. You have to like process those emotions and move on with your life. Like you have to physically move somewhere so I can track you with your location. Birds so. of a feather start people on fire together. There, you heard it here first. So Sheena's like, how's the pizza? And Dana just rolls her eyes. I'm glad Dana's back because Katie yeah. really needs the support of that. <laughs> yeah yeah well you know she's a stand-up comic so ariana's like she's like and now i'm mad at you again by association schwartz I, like, knew it. Oh. <laughs> I love that ariana is now in an and you and yeah. you and she kind of laughs mode. about it she's like okay then get out of here then bye and then she laughs, <laughs> then he just like goes, he leaves so uh <laughs> Shorts is like, okay, then bye. Katie, call me. Give me a call. <laughs> they all start cracking up. I okay, really hope so. that I really hope that backstage at Chicago, Ariana's wearing a turban because she's really stepping into her like her like theater turban moment right now. Like she's like she's got the attitude here. She's now on Broadway. All she needs is that turban and she'll be complete. Yeah, she is having her Sally Field and soap dish moment. Yeah. So the next or day, no, the doesn't. song is I got money on my wrist. I got money on my wrist. I got money on my wrist. Congrats on your new Apple Watch, bro. Like, move it the fuck along. Are we really writing songs about Apple Watches now? So uh, Katie is sitting on her couch and she's like, Are we going to Sheena's beach day or are we just going to like fake our dads? She's texting Ariana. <laughs> so then uh, ants attack an open orange on the ground. This was odd. They, well, they need a new food source. All right, guys, new plan. We're going vegetarian. No more this satay. Is... Now it's time for citrus. We were talking on Below Deck about how they were using so many odes to HBO shows. And this one is continuing it with the True Blood opening. Wasn't it the True Blood opening where they just kept showing things decaying and dying? And just showing like bugs eating the fruit, all the fruit or whatever? I've never seen that. I've never seen True Blood. It I wasn't Six Feet was Under. Opening. Hmm? It wasn't six feet under with its funeral no. motif. No, no. Okay, so um, I feel like I got that wrong, but you know what? Too late. So she like, it was Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> <laughs> That's the death. Wasn't it one day at a time? Only things decomposing, please. That's <laughs> the only way I'll do this Shake show. Song, also, I'd love on. to wear a card again the entire time. It's like, no, it's just like the FX reboot of Mr. Belvedere, where it's like really adult. It's like streaks on the china. Never Mr. Belvedere is like standing in the hallway while the family eats, just masturbating while he watches that. <laughs> it's called, just called Belvedere. 
he's like masturbating and then crying and then like doing heroin upstairs and they're like for your consideration for comedy belvedere <laughs> so uh lala's doing a shaker weight thing and that stupid song money on my wrist is still playing oh and we see sandoval taking out the trash which i guess is supposed to be some moral point for him i mean they're really working hard on this show like look who knows how to take out the trash sandoval <laughs> Uh, Brock is feeding Summer, and he's like, guess what, guess what me and Mommy are doing tonight? She's like, no, say work, say work, say work. Having fun. <laughs> yeah. You want to have a good time, don't you, Summer? Because we love you, and we want you to have a good time with your new friends. So now just here comes night time. And he puts the big hat over Summer, so she's quiet. Did like you hear that Brock, uh, the rumor that Brock is cheating with some Australian um some Australian influencer. That was the rumor online that he was did not hear that that he was doing DMs or something, trading his sexy DMs with this. Now, did I research this? I did not. Do you know how I know about this? Because I read about it in the comments of Crappy Hour. So sorry for spreading <laughs> any defamation. If none of that, I'm assuming none of it's true because we would have heard by now. But um, yeah. <laughs> That's there okay. You go. I just, we'll just put it out there on the platform. And, well, you know. I just felt like, you know, people are talking about it. We have to say it. Um, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Brock was cheating, but I've always thought he's going to cheat. My big worry was that he was going to bang Lala, who lives next door to them in Palm Desert or wherever they are, Palm Springs. Mm. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, she knows, like, I'm really bummed that, like, Gabby isn't more available to, like, be like a baby. So, and Brock's like, yeah, well, it's difficult, but once we find something we like, it'll be worth it. She's like, well, I just hate going back to the drawing board. He's like, what drawing board? We've literally, we li we literally never ask anyone. Are we, wait, question, are we about to draw? Is that what you're saying? In the cold plunge? Where I come from, we don't draw with crayons. We use sticks in dirt. <laughs> Let's do that. We stick, we stick sticks into wallaby poo. So then he uh, tells us again that before COVID, he was like a totally successful businessman. <laughs> so maybe he can get back to that, guys. And then um, Sheena's like, did you invite Tom to this beach day? And she goes, we need to uninvite him, okay? After last night? Because everyone's invited, and if she can't handle that, she shouldn't be going to places. To be that triggered, you need to fix it. What I saw was not okay. <laughs> like, didn't you slap your spouse? I mean... Listen, I believe in people having the opportunity to change and grow. Maybe it's too soon to throw stones, is all I'm saying. Well, I'm curious if, like, I mean, like, I'm assuming that they had, like, no interaction at home. Like, I, like, if I could only, like, hack into their ring cam, I could really get to the bottom of this. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. He's home. He's home, honey. <laughs> I'm doing the emo remix of the ring, ring cam jingle. Dun, dun, ha! <laughs> 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 so uh i love that this whole time he's doing makeup on summer it's so cute i know so, um he goes well who's the one yelling it was ariana and she's yeah but it's because of him and he goes why what did he do walk past her these are adults we're talking about she's like oh my god do you want me to explain it to you or do you want to cut it off oh, hold on cold plunge <laughs> Do you understand how, like, sometimes you get, like, heated really quick? Like, really quick? So, like, who the fuck are you to judge Ariana for getting heated at someone she hates who put her dog in the hospital because the dog ate her leftover garbage that she had sitting on her nightstand for four days? <laughs> well, she should do it for her own sanity because she's not, you know, it's not like she's got to give him a pardon or anything. She's like, you know what? Like, uh, what Sandoval did was the best thing to ever happen to Ariana. I mean, it's brought so much wealth and so much prosperity and opportunity to her life. But if I say that, she's going to cut me out. <laughs> I love only people on this show would be like, that is the luckiest girl of all time. Lala's like, that girl really got cheated on in the best way fucking possible. <laughs> Lucky yeah. girl. Uh, so now we go back to Tom and Ariana's. And Ariana is like opening up a dress box. And they're just like... Um, oh, so this lady, her interior designer comes over because remember, they are inventorying what Ariana paid for and everything. So they start going through all this stuff. And it turns out that like Ariana has paid for a lot of the furniture. And she's like, oh, Sandoval thought that he could just like make this offer and I was just going to leave and leave all the furniture I paid for at home. But no, I'm going to find out every single piece and how much I paid for it. So there's no loopholes where he can fuck me over. So um, they start going through everything, and then we see memories that are attached to each piece of furniture, like Tom getting a haircut, 
Tom, the first time he ever read about a Philips Hue bulb, you know? Um, <laughs> Tom, uh, on a treadmill. So they basically, they can just go through all this stuff and um, it's like, she's gonna write an email. Her, her lawyer's basically gonna write, like gonna add it all up and send an email to Sandoval as the counter offer. Please don't kill my vibe right now. Please don't kill my vibe right now. If you're not gonna have fun, get out. That's the song. So James and Brock are carrying things on the beat, those big tent things and putting those up. And um, Katie, she, everybody starts coming, you know, and Schwartz is like, oh my God, ready to get it. Oh no, Sheena says, ready to get a drink thrown in your face, Schwartz. And then we see a ah. flashback to the last time they were on the beach and getting in the fight about Hey, is this better than Richella? Uh-huh. <laughs> this is going to be like Beach Day Redemption. Like, nothing could possibly go wrong today. So Alibati is like, is he going to come? Is Sandoval coming? And Ari Ariana's like, I'm pretty sure when I was getting ready to leave, he had this stripy crochet thing in the dryer. Katie, would you do the honors? <laughs> Up oh, there it is, the stripy thing in the dryer. Walking up the <laughs> beach right now. Sup, bro? Sup, everybody? Yeah, he's wearing his crochet top. Ariana's like, dead man walking, dead man walking, <laughs> fucking dog murdering asshole. She set up like a little barrier of skewers around the tent. <laughs> like, good luck getting in. So um, they are like in there and Ariana's talking about she loves bitchin' sauce. I guess, they're, is that, are they eating sandwiches? I don't remember. I don't know. So then... Um, <laughs> Sandoval's like, nice necklace, dude. Oh, Sandoval's wearing that toy necklace still. Like, he's trying to Harry Styles so bad. It's just, it's not. So James is it like, barely oh, well. works on Harry Styles. Can we just be honest? Okay. He kind of made it popular, so it kind of works on him. The rest of you, just stop on Bravo, please. I mean, what's next? The butterfly wings on your fucking chest, like the guy on Below Deck Bed. I can't with you guys. All right, everyone. Here are the rules. Okay, I'm drawing a line in the sand. Literally. <laughs> Ali Bali, did you laugh? Did you laugh? Laugh, Ali. Okay, guess what? This side is Sandoval's side, and this is Ariana's side. Everyone stay on their own sides. Oh, my God. Oh, sorry. I guess I write Schwartz and Sheena. I write Sheena, S-C-H, and I write Schwartz, S-C-W. So I sometimes get them confused when we're in the same scene. Sorry. So she, uh, he's like, Sheena, I got you something. She's like, oh, my God, but you got me. Capri Sun! I love Capri Sun. <laughs> so I was out the other night and I met this girl who like puts on singles events in LA and it's like, and Schwartz is like, oh yeah, I signed up for it. It's like, oh, they're going to a singles event. That's so funny. Ali Bali, isn't that the funniest thing you've ever heard in your life, Ali Bali? Want to come, Katie? With you? <sighs> yeah, it'd be my date to singles night. I mean, as long as it's not Max, because that already happened. Ironically, I think that brought us closer together, right, Katie? She goes, how? Because uh? we're the same, Katie. She's like, no, we are not the same because you were getting it the entire time we were together. Yeah, but like from a statistical standpoint, I was pretty faithful. I mean, 12 years, 365 days a year. That's like almost 380 minutes like basically nothing like we know i it's like i it's like i had nothing i had i cheated on you as many times as we had sex it was like nothing and she's like bad joke i get it so sandoval did you know that sheena and schwartz kissed in vegas what do you think of that he goes uh yeah i uh didn't know about that and then we see a clip of schwartz telling lala yeah apparently i told tom because he was riffing on it the other day you know Really bringing it up a lot, laughing about it. You know how he is. These two, it's always, they've always got each other's backs. So Katie's like, wow, you guys really did keep a secret. Yeah, like I literally forgot about it. Like I like burned it because like literally every guy in this group has flirted with me at some point and John Mayer too. God, oh, did I say that part out loud? Whoops, my body's a wonderland. Whoops, did I say that again? Oh my God, here's a clipping of John, of, of, of John Mayer back in those days. Oh my God, I'm going wild. Okay, even you, Sandoval, even you flirted with me. Other headlines I've read is that John Mayer denies ever being with Sheena and is getting annoyed that she keeps <laughs> trying to John Mayer, guys, John the Mayer's only annoyed. person John Mayer hasn't fucked, uh, apparently. Like, that's got to be embarrassing when John Mayer is like, you know what? I've literally fucked half this population. I've fucked more people than McDonald's has served burgers to, but I don't <laughs> claim that one. <laughs> so I think actually she dodged a bullet. So Sandoval is like, it's more like I was the recipient of flirtiness, Sheena. And 
Brock is like, oh, isn't that what you told Raquel when you saw that whole thing? <laughs> oh, God. So he's like, dude, stop. That's just such a low hanging fruit. All right. And Ariana's like, um, could you have this conversation not in front of me? Because it's fucking disgusting. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. It's like, well, yeah, let's do that. It's it's fucking on you. It's on you. And he's like, I was I didn't bring it, but I didn't even bring it up, Ariana. Yeah, but the only reason it's disgusting is because you made it disgusting. So go have it somewhere else. <laughs> So Schwartz's like, okay, guys, let's have a breather. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be a really good day. <laughs> Brock's like, draw that line again. Brock, stop with your fucking messiness. Jeez. How much are <laughs> they paying the Brock who... for this season? Brock, you were the one who, who blurred that line. So um, Katie's like, Sandoval, I heard Anne's out of a job. He's like, no, I didn't fire her. I just like, well, I just like told her to take a couple days off. That's it. And never to come back. That's all. But not fired. Uh, well, if if she's not there to mediate between the two of you, who does that for you? She's like, well, I haven't had to cross that bridge. But who's looking after Maya? And she's like, well, it's not like Anne's Maya's sitter or anything. <laughs> yeah, but like, do you like do you feel like she's safe right now? She's like, yeah, she's safe. So um, Schwartz is, I mean, uh, Schwartz is like, well, you guys are both dog and cat parents. That's pretty cool. You guys want to talk? You guys want to talk about that? Come on. And I was like, no, I am the parent because they're mine, but he is not. So Sandoval's like, no, that's not true. She goes, yeah, I paid the adoption fee, so I bought her. And he's like, and so James is like, you're going to fight her, bro. You're going to fight her. <laughs> and now he's like, yeah, because she paid the adoption fee. That's like so sad of her. Oh, it's like the one bill that Ariana paid. <laughs> And so Ariana's like, she's mine. I'm the only one who's ever taken her for a walk. The only one that's ever given her a bath. So you can suck my dick. <laughs> so Sandoval's like, well, according to your rules, Ariana, since you found her and did the paperwork, my people found the house and my people did the loan. <laughs> she's like, I mean, her money paid for the house. You fucking twit. This guy's such an idiot. So she's like, do not speak to me. Literally stop. Literally do not. Do not literally. Speak literally me, stop Ariana. speaking. Literally speaking stop it. Literally. Uh, anything I do or say is tricking for her. I had this like delusional idea that would be even more civil than Tom and Katie. I'm like, what part of you cheating on your girlfriend with her best friend would ever make you think it would lead to a more civil situation, especially when you claim that she is rageful every time you open up a can of mustard or something like that? Where are you guys going for a piss? Because Tom's going off to be all sad. You know, he's like, <laughs> I'm gonna like stare. At the, I'm gonna like stare while the wind blows through my crochet top, and I'm gonna do this <laughs> while I come up with things to blog about in my journal. <laughs> so Lala and other Logan show up, and she's like, "Hi everyone, how's you doing? How's everyone going?" And Ariana's like, "Well, he's trying to say all this shit about me, and this is why I will not be doing this again. But you guys keep doing, keep trying to do this." And Lala's like, "What?" This is already, already? We're like, I'm like only five minutes late. <laughs> so Ariana's saying, oh, he's just sitting there talking shit and he ruined my entire life, literally. And do me a favor, keep me away from him. And Brock's like, we have. And he's over there with his tail between his legs all summer. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, it's not between his legs because he's talking shit. And he goes, yeah, but he's talking shit with his voice because his tail is between his legs and he can't <laughs> talk with that. And she's like, well, whatever. He's like, yeah. Also, tails don't talk. It's like, what, what, where is this fight going <laughs> which is, to? Brock? Which is funny because when you talk a lot, some say you're telling a tale. Oh, it's so confusing. <laughs> they spell differently. It's crazy, I know. <laughs> let's all take a moment just to think about it for a second. All right. Listen, let's turn this into a toy factory. Anybody got some water to pour over this sand? <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not quite as good as sand, but it'll do. So she's like, he's really comfortable talking shit and none of you guys put him in check and it's really disrespectful. And James is like, I'm not saying she needs to forgive and forget, but I think it'd be better to release this anger. She would be more at peace with herself. We'll just have a lot of ice cream and weed. And so um, she's just like, you guys have to step up and be men and be like, bro, shut the fuck up. She's like, yeah, he's such a misogynist. He needs men to tell him to shut up because he only respects men. And you have to say, shut up and take it because you're the one in the wrong here. Well, I mean, that's not going to happen. I get, I get that you would actually want tried. people to stand up for you, but I think that I think that you had the reunion and like 
a quarter of this season, and I think there's a grace period where they're just all like, "No, yeah, it's over." Look, we got to shoot, like, so let's let's do something. Come on. Brock's like, "You think he's not taking it? He left. He's over there moping in a very demonstrative way." And Lala's like, "He's in defense modes. Okay, so anything you say within earshots, he's gonna react to." And Ariana's like, I don't care. Tell him to shut the fuck up. And Lala, I don't need you to play devil's advocate, okay? Because the devil has enough advocate. He has his own movie called The Devil's Advocate, okay? <laughs> and Lala's like, I don't think I'm playing the devil's advocate. And she's like, yeah, well, he is the devil. And you're being his advocate. <laughs> um, I understand he was being an uber douche. But this was like the most devastating breakups. And at what point do you choose inner peace? Because he didn't win. Look at his life. You won, sk. So this, I think, is the whole point, right? Where she's like, he's never going to be sorry, remorseful, and you guys keep shoving him down my throat. And what do you think I'm going to do? Say, wow, best beach day ever. Like, when I have to sit here like, while he throws jabs at me, like, what do you expect? Yeah, that is the point. She is clearly, like, she, clearly, I, I think that, like, she, this is such a, she is still so deeply hurt by the situation and I think she's trying to play the reality show game of like, whatever, I will show up to the shop because like, these are my friends and I don't want to fuck up my job and my money because of this douchebag. But I don't think she, she is like not ready to do this. I think that she needs to have like a breather. I think she should take a season off and she needs to heal and like, then she can come back and be fabulous. Well, I don't think she can't. Well, I don't think she'll come back anyway, right? Well, if you're hosting that Love other Island. show, Love is Blind, Love Island or whatever, Love is Blind on Islands. Well, Love um, Island, the, the host does not actually do that much. Like, it's not like you're on there every episode. I think that what happens is, you know, you fly out there, you'll be there for like a day, then you fly back. So she can, they'll, I think they could work that out with the schedule. But I just think that, you know, the truth is, like you were saying before, that like one of the reasons why the audience is frustrated is because it's like, ultimately there's a show to shoot and people need to shoot, you know, people need to like participate in scenes. And... That is true, and you need to do that. And I don't, she's clearly not like, this is not working for her. Like, cause rightfully so, cause she is forced to have to be nice and to like share time and space with someone who hurt her on such a deep level. Like, I wouldn't want to do that. I would be furious. So I think that she just needs to like have some healing time and then she can come back. Well, I wish she had just left this season and then come back a season later as like, Da -na -na -na, the return of Ariana, you know, right? Like, you but then if she you left, see, the you see the the ankles coming out of the car very slowly. And well, I think that's what I, she had to be there this season because she was so white hot when the reunion, reunion ended. Bravo was like, I'm sure, like you have to come back, and she also probably was like, Why should I leave? like my gig because of his well fuck yeah up. that too. Like, why am I going to give up this huge bag right. of money because of that fuck? You know, but now that she has other bags of money. I say, right, take a the, year. You know, this is still a big bag of money. So I'm like, I don't care it how is. many bags of money you have. This has got to be a pretty big bag, you know? So but all, it's, and, it's and not up to is, her to necessarily leave. But if you are going to stay for the money, you're not just giving that money for fucking free. You've got to shoot a show. And she is shooting it. She's yeah. not shooting it the way everybody wants her to, I'm sure. But she is still showing up and shooting it. It's just. And I'm falling into the trap that I just said people are falling into. Which is like, also, let's not forget that this was a year ago, basically, like nine, ten months ago. And maybe now for the next season, she's in a new place where she could actually, she can shoot scenes with him and like be part of this ensemble in a way that's not like forcing people to take sides. So who knows? Yeah, time will tell, everybody. Time will tell. Um, we are going to be back with The Valley with a tremendous episode of The Valley, if you ask me. Wow, what an episode. So uh, stay tuned for that. And thanks, everyone, for being here and for listening. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye.